Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. So today I have quite an exciting video because I'm going to be going book shopping in Hay on Wye in Wales. I mentioned before that I'm from Wales and I really want to talk a little bit more about my country. We are such a small country, like Wales is tiny if you've ever been here, but we have a really strong literary scene which a lot of people don't realise. Hay on Wye is one of my favourite places in the entire world because it's a small beautiful little town and it's just full of bookshops and cafes. It's actually got I think about 20 bookshops and it only has like a thousand five hundred residents. The town also has a annual festival that celebrates literature. I've actually been and I saw Margaret Atwood speak there which was honestly one of the coolest things ever. I probably won't be able to visit every bookshop there just because there are so many but I am going to take you on a sort of whistle stop tour of some of my favourite shops there and I'm going to chat to you a little bit about them, show you inside. Um, I'm bringing my boyfriend with me so he's going to be kind of my cameraman of the day. It's a little bit rainy out but I personally don't mind that. I actually find book shopping on rainy days the best. It gives you that kind of twilight ambience. I just love it. I'm going to set up now but I really hope you enjoy this video. Hey on Why is such a special place to me and yeah I just can't wait to share it with you all. Our first stop is the Honesty Bookshop. This is an outdoor bookshop based in the castle grounds. Each book is priced at just £1 which goes towards maintaining the local area. I love how haphazardly the books are organised here. It really feels like a treasure hunt trying to find a book hidden amongst all the chaos. The second bookshop I visited was Green Ink Booksellers. This store sold so many special editions and vintage books in every genre. My favourite section was the children's section. I spotted so many of my own favourites there that reminded me of my childhood. Then I stumbled across this amazing little alleyway filled with books. It honestly felt like something straight out of Harry Potter world. Bookshop number three is a shop that I always go back to when I visit Hay. Richard Booth's bookshop is truly iconic with three floors of both used and new books.
Upstairs, there are so many areas where you can sit down, get cosy and read while surrounded by their gorgeous bookshelves. It has such a warm and welcoming feel, which always causes me to lose track of time when I visit there. Bookshop number four is just one of the many bookshops in Hay dedicated to a specific genre. Murder and Mayhem specialises in crime and mystery novels. These books are not usually my cup of tea, but the creative interior made me fall in love with this shop. Bookshop number four is Ardimon Books. The interior of this shop is so cool. I love browsing through their endless selection of orange penguin classics. Upstairs, they have an entire selection dedicated to mythology. And this spooky corner dedicated to horror. The last store we visited was the Hay Cinema Bookshop. This is an old cinema which now houses an endless maze of books that I actually almost got lost in. The ceiling even still has the original paintwork. I found a few titles in their fabulous translated fiction sections 
that I just had to buy. I found some treasures, you guys. So the first book I got was Leave the World Behind by Roman Alam, and I got this for one pound. One pound in the Honesty Bookshop. And look at it, it's a hardback. I'm so excited. I think I'm going to read this in the autumn time because I've heard it's a bit of a mystery and it's very atmospheric. I don't actually know a lot about the plot, to be honest. I'm just really easily sucked in by a pretty cover. It's blurred by Carmen Maria Machado as well, so I just have a feeling that this is going to be a good one, especially in autumn time. I'm not very good with spooky, scary reads. I'm actually such a baby, but let's hope that this isn't too terrifying. Oh my gosh, Kylie Reid and Roxane Gay have also blurbed it, so yeah, we just know that this is going to be a good one, I think. Plus, look how pretty it is. The next two secondhand books I got were um, actually translated books, which I was really excited about because it's currently Woman in Translation Month, um, so yeah, I'm trying to celebrate that. So the first one I got, which I've been looking forever for in charity shops and secondhand shops because... Basically, I try to get my um, classics and kind of books that have been out for a long time secondhand. So I found it finally, which is Like Water for Chocolate by Laura Esquivel. And this is a Mexican bestseller. Like, I'm sure you've heard about it. It's basically a classic at this point. It's also got some magical realism aspects in it. So it's got kind of a magical feel. So I'm really excited. I'm pretty sure that it's told in sort of a soap opera kind of way where everything's very dramatic and passionate and I just love books and TV shows like that. It's also got loads of food references in it, like every chapter begins with a recipe. So yeah, can't wait for this one. And, and I think I'm going to try and read it this month for Women in Translation Month. So the next translated book I got was The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoka Ogawa and this is a Japanese book. It has been on... Oh, this has been on my radar for so long. It's another one that I kind of look out for every time I go in secondhand shops. And I don't think this is a very plot driven book. I think it's quite quiet, but it's basically does what it says on the tin. The housekeeper and the professor fall in love. It's about a maths professor with short term memory loss. So the housekeeper and the professor get very close because the housekeeper um, sort of cares for him in a way. I'm really interested in books that have math references in it. I don't like maths but my boyfriend loves maths. I'm the literature person, he's the maths person. So I kind of want an insight into his world and sort of to see the magic behind maths and science and stuff because yeah it's nice to read things about passions that aren't necessarily your own. I actually didn't realise how much translated fiction I got but I got two more translated books and these have been translated from Japanese. So I got Breasts and Eggs by Miko Kawakami and then from the same author I got Heaven. Earlier this month I read Miss Ice Sandwich by the same author um, and I just love her writing style. So I was desperate to get my hands on the next two and yeah I bought these full price and they were a little bit pricey but I'm obsessed with the covers. I think they're so cool and I also kind of like the idea of reading a book called Breasts and Eggs in public just to scare off people. I think that would be funny. So Heaven is actually about a 14 year old boy who goes through severe bullying. Um, it's quite a short one. Miss Ice Sandwich, the book that I read earlier this month, was also about a young boy and Miko Kawakami really captured the sort of writing style, the inner thought process of a child so well, which I think is so hard to do. I've read so many books by adults which um, try and take on the point of view of a child or a teenager and they really, really struggle with that. But I think that this author is very talented at doing that. From what I've heard about this book, it's a very emotional and heavy book. But yeah, I'm just so excited. I really hope that Miko Kawakami will be like one of my new favourite authors. And then Breasts and Eggs apparently is kind of a feminist book, which I'm so excited about. So it's told in two sections. So I think apparently this was originally published as two books in Japan, but they've published it as one in the UK. 
it talks about contemporary womanhood in Japan and it also talks about plastic surgery I believe and motherhood so yeah I can't wait to read this one I think it'll be very interesting and I'm very intrigued to find out more about what it's like to be a woman in Japan because the books I've read from Japan this far have been written by men then the last book that I bought brand new was Know My Name by Chanel Miller I've wanted to read this book ever since it came out. It originally came out in hardback, so I kind of put off buying it until it came out in paperback. But now I finally have my copy. If you don't know who Chanel Miller is, then you really need to go and read up on it. She is the woman that was involved in the sexual assault um, case in Stanford University in 2016, which involved Brock Turner. I remember when this first came out and I read it when I was only 16 or 17 years old I think at the time and um, Chanel Miller actually released a victim statement under the name of Jane Doe and that statement is so powerful I read it I was so emotional yeah just because I've had that connection to Chanel Miller for all these years but she didn't have her name out there she didn't have her face and now she's having her opportunity to tell her story I just can't wait to read her words I know that this is going to be a very emotional heavy read but I think it'll be extremely important she was such a key part of the Me Too movement gaining momentum I've already heard lots of people saying that this is the best memoir they've ever read so I have no doubt that this is going to be a book that I will annotate and just will stick with me forever. So those are the six books that I bought today. I definitely did not need six new books um, but I did have some good bargains there and yeah some books that I've really wanted for a long time. I hope that you really enjoyed this video. If you did please give me a like, comment below um, if you enjoyed it and also subscribe so that you can catch my next videos. I've got quite a few that I have coming up that I'm really excited about and I really think that you will enjoy them. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye!